Hello everyone, I've got an update today about a really useful add-on to do with uh, rendering at markers. Um, I found it really useful for exporting storyboards and for overcoming some of the stepped animation difficulties. The add-ons are created by Ed White and are called Render Markers and Viewport Render Markers. And what they do is they allow you to render specific marked moments on the timeline, as being shown here. And what that actually allows us to do is to render out specific panels from an animatic or an animation sequence so that they can be used as storyboard panels. Or furthermore, they can actually be used to create a stepped version of your animation, uh, which helps us overcome some of the issues we've been having with regards to the sliding effect when you're moving at full frame. Ed is someone who contacted me recently with some interest to do with creating add-ons specifically for storyboarding and animatics in Blender. And I think you'll be really interested in the add-ons that Ed has in mind. But for now, let's just take a look through how these uh, the marker render markers and viewport render markers work. So this is Ed's Gumroad. And on that, we have access to both the render markers and viewport render markers. So I click on render markers. You know how the, if you've used Gumroad, you see how this stuff works. You go down. Uh, it's currently free, um, so you can download and try it yourself. But if you do find it useful, uh, please consider donating something to Ed. Uh, here's also a GitHub link, which has got README files. And if you want the files in this, uh, this format, I suggest you do read the README file. It does help. But I'll go through everything I can. Here, Likewise, here is the viewport render markers. Again, for free. Donate if you find it useful. Um, again, the GitHub links here. All these will be linked in the description of the video. So, yeah, go and check them out. Download them. Put them somewhere safe. You don't need to unzip the file. Just keep them where you downloaded them. Uh, and then if you go up to Edit, Preferences. On the side, we have Add-ons. Click that. Then go to Install at the top. Navigate to where you saved them. Click Install. Come back. Click Install. Then uh, to find them, you can either scroll all the way down the list to find them, or you can go uh, up to the top and just type in, say, markers, and both of those add-ons should show up. Then you just need to check them on. And then if you drop down the menus here, you can actually see the Edward S. White, Edward S. White. Uh, you can save preferences then to make sure these add-ons remain installed. I always forget to do that. To find the installed render markers, uh, go to render and then underneath that you can see render images at markers and render holding on markers. The viewport version, if you go to view in your viewport and then down to the bottom there, we have viewport render holding on markers. We can't do singles yet in the viewport. So the next thing to do now is to actually start making our markers on the timeline at the places that we want them. Now this is going to be completely different for every single scene you do. So I'm just running through this scene as an example of where I felt I wanted my keyframes that I wanted to export as either storyboard panels or to have a stepped version of the animatic so that we get away from any of that like feet sliding on the floor kind of stuff. Something worth bearing in mind is that even though you're looking for key moments here and key, uh, keyframes, uh, try and keep your keyframes that you choose, your markers, relatively evenly spaced out. Otherwise, what you'll get is a kind of a janky sort of export if you're doing the uh, stepped animation. So go over to the right then and set your resolution and your time frame and your uh, step, which needs to be on one. Uh, make sure it's on one, otherwise this feature, the uh, markers feature export won't quite work correctly. I'll demonstrate the viewport render options first. So go over to uh, your folder, locate where you want to save it to. Uh, the viewport currently, the viewport export with markers only allows video, not stills, to be exported. So choose either the AVI or the MPEG. And then you go to your viewport. Uh, if you want to cancel out with this, you press escape. This allows you to then go back and change your, um, your folder in case it was wrong. So now we want to export, we just go to the view click the button, click OK, and it will start exporting. Now, you can see where, like my marker, you can see it counting down there. 
or counting up sorry it's telling you what frame it's on don't worry if it looks like it's crashed it hasn't crashed right it's all going on under the hood if you open up the folder that you were exporting to you'll see the frames appearing or if you go up to window and go down to toggle system console you'll see this black uh, box pop up and it'll show you the uh, the frames the panels the exports being uh, so if we now go to our folder where the export was being made, there's our AVI, double click it, let's see how it runs. So now you can see it's, it's rendering in a stepped manner. So do, 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 instead of flowing perfectly smoothly. So this helps alleviate some of that sliding. Now because uh, this is the, the viewport render markers, uh, that means that whatever your viewport is displaying is what will get rendered off. So whether you've got it in shaded mode, or you've got matcap mode, or you've got materials on, or whether you've got it fully in EV, um, that's what's going to come out in the render. So that's the great thing is that the viewport rendering is really quite fast, very, very fast actually compared to actually rendering fully. So um, this definitely allows you to get that, pretty much get your export looking exactly as you want it, whatever style you like working in. So let's again export via the uh, viewport render markers and it will render exactly as it's looking in the viewport and make it into an AVI there you see all the frames happening again. So this is the same method it's just because I've switched on a different visual setting now it's going to render like this. So that's, that's pretty great but I mean that looks there's not an awful lot of quality difference between what happens in the viewport and what EV renders. So there's actually quite a huge uh, time save difference here using the viewport. And considering it goes straight to an ABI, then you've already got your animatic done. So let's take a look now and then at the render version of this. So render markers. Uh, this one actually uses whatever your render, full render settings are. So if you're using EV or you're using cycles, uh, that's what this one's gonna use. So going up to the render option, We'll, again, we'll have a look at those options in the markers. So the first one is render image at marker and render hold, and second is render holding at marker. So let's try the render image at marker. Now this one is the one that gives you the single exports, one per marker. So this is great for your storyboards. Now uh, these in the render settings, currently we can only choose uh, still images. We can't choose video. So either choose like a JPEG or a PNG or Targa, whatever it is that suits you and go to uh, render image at marker and it will export those and only those uh, as there's a render and then if you open the folder up you can see them coming out as they come out there a new one came up then at the bottom so this is only rendering the, the actual markers so this gives you then your um, your more reduced storyboard version of the animatic so um, you could then go and template this stuff up somewhere, Photoshop or Storyboard Pro, wherever you feel like. The other version of the rendered markers is the rend uh, viewport render holding on markers. So that means now that instead of creating a single render uh, per marker, it will actually keep rendering that marker until the next marker happens. So then when you, you get a bunch of exports that um, when imported back into the video sequencer or Adobe Premiere or whatever you want to use to do your animatics, uh, it'll actually, if you import them in on ones, it'll actually be timed correctly, but it will have the stepped animation type to it. Now, this is quite an inefficient way of doing it really because you're, rend you're essentially rendering tons of the same image. Uh, Edward is actually looking into a uh, another add-on that removes the need to do that and actually imports to time into the video sequencer. If you've not used the video sequencer before, basically um, to open it up, go up to the plus sign at the end of the, uh, the thing there, click that and then go to video editing, video editing. And then this new viewport will uh, open up. This is the Blender video sequencer editor. So to import your scene or your sequence, uh, you need to go to add and then image sequence and that will take you to a folder and then you need to uh, find your the folder, you need to select all of the frames from your sequence. So top to bottom hold shift, select them all and then import them in and this will add 
uh, add image strip and as you can see it all comes in as one chunk they don't come in as individual files uh, this makes managing this, the scene easier uh, what you'll notice here is that it's actually come in a little bit delayed on the time frame so it's outside of the parameters of the render so what you need to do is drag the, the sequence back to zero or at least start at zero or one and then make sure that on your timeline or your render um, parameters that it includes all of the frames and then once you've done that you need to render it out but as you can see here the actual resolution the aspect ratio is wrong here because the resolution of this blender file is different to the source resolution of the files so go to your files check your resolution just you can do that just by selecting one of them and then reading the resolution uh, in the JPEG image or the PNG whatever you've got and then you go back into blender and just change the resolution in there to match your original size and it will match them perfectly and you have the correct resolution you're working with the correct resolution now so then when you export it, everything will be fine. So now what we can see as I play it through in a moment, I'll play it through in real time, uh, that it's doing the stepped motion as uh, dictated by the uh, where the markers were placed and how we rendered the mark stepped. So this it, this is correct, and you can see that. Uh, so then we're, we're, we're kind of done for this bit, so then you just need to go up to your uh, render settings, which in this viewport are actually up on the top right. Uh, not the bottom right like they normally are um, then choose your render output now you'll be wanting to do an, uh, an AVI or an, FPEG, um, an MPEG here because you've already done your single images so you, then you just need to go to render and then render animation and uh, it'll, it'll pump that out so basically the, the as it stands, if you want to use the rendered version, there's just this extra step you have to do to take it into the image sequencer, uh, the video, edit, video editor, in order to then like re-export it as a video because at the moment the, uh, the markers uh, option doesn't allow the rendered version to be pumped off as a video, but the viewport does. Now what this, the markers give us is the control over exactly which keyframes we want rendered or held if we want it stepped. Uh, because Blender actually has the ability to render off stepped um, images, but it depends on how high an increment you go, because you can choose, say, 10 or 20, but you're definitely going to skip keyframes. You're going to miss things out. So over on the right here, you can see there is an option there to step, right? And that means it's only going to render every 10 frames or every 20 frames or every 5 frames, and then you pump it off, and it will come out like that. But as I said, you, you're going to miss keyframes. You not you haven't got that control that the markers, uh, this new marker add-on gives you over exactly what frames get rendered. But let's say you have exported a uh, stepped animation from Blender's regular stepping method, right? So say it's on five or ten frames. What you need to do then is the same as earlier. Go to the uh, the video sequencer, import it in the same way as earlier, but make sure that in this setting here that you match the number of your end frame so that when it imports it goes from one to that number then import it then once you're imported because this will go like super fast now right so what you need to do then in order to get the timing correct on this is you go to strip and then go to separate images and then put the number in that you want to step it. So if you rendered it off with a five step, put five, if it was 10, 10, if it was 20, put 20, and you'll see now that it actually plays like consistently stepped all the way through. I mean, this is a, a nice easy way of getting this effect without using the markers. But again, unless you go down to something like stepping by five frames, you are definitely gonna miss keys. So hopefully, um, if you're like me, uh, you'll be able to use this uh, new marker render uh, add on to a uh, good effect for your storyboard and exports and stepping needs um, uh, if you find as I said earlier if you find it this useful please consider donating to Edwards uh, Gumroad or his patreon which I will link in the description or uh, and subscribe to his YouTube channel which he'll be making updates in the future and I think um, you'll be really interested to see the other main add-on that he's, he's been working on 
because it's uh, directly related to a storyboard workflow within Blender Grease Pencil. And there's some really interesting applications for that. So I'm very excited to, uh, to look forward to that. Okay, thanks. Bye.